Good afternoon. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama. I am your host for another great episode of Business in Hawaii. On a very beautiful, sun drenched afternoon in the capital city of Honolulu, in the state of Hawaii. And we are going to be focusing on a tool to be used by CEOs and, of course, leaders in many, many organizations. How to achieve success and have a bridge between strategic planning, a long term, and a day to day execution. How can you really get your staff, employees, people, colleagues to complete projects, fulfill goals, and create success in many companies throughout Hawaii, the US, and the world? I have as our guest today Iqbal Ashraf to my left from Guild Consulting, a partner there. And welcome to the show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, today we're going to put up the first slide, if we can. Why don't we go ahead? And it's called Objectives and Key Results, OKRs. But before that, I see the logo of Guild Consulting. Can you tell me a little bit about what Guild Consulting does and your role and background? Yeah. Guild Consulting is a local consulting firm array. Um, we have six partners, and our office is in Manoa Innovation Center. And we do basically three things. One is we do strategic planning for, uh, you know, uh, for-profit, non-profit, uh, even for government. Um, second thing we do is uh, a very unique service called Growth Partner Service. This is meant for companies uh, between $5 million to $50 million, which the CEO or the founder wants to grow really fast. And it's a, uh, like I was saying, a very unique service that we provide. And the third thing we do uh, are consulting projects, um, you know, like any other consulting company. Our difference is that we have access to a whole bunch of uh, very specialized expertise from all over US, and we bring those to bear for companies in Hawaii. And today we're talking about OKRs. Uh, and can you define that for, uh, for the audience? Because I think a lot of CEOs have heard of that term uh, and have really um, um, uh, tried to do this sometimes on their own. Uh, uh, and what is that exactly? Where did it come from? Sure. Um, so, you know, Peter Drucker, who is um, widely uh, kind of recognized as the father of management, um, uh, he introduced a concept called management by objectives. And OKR is an offshoot of that. MBO, I've heard of that. You're mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Um, OKRs uh, were first practiced by Andy Grove uh, at Intel, and it was very successful. And then John Doerr, who was uh, at Intel and later became a venture capitalist, uh, brought it to many of his portfolio companies and then it just became like an evangelist for this method of achieving, you know, really ambitious goals. And it's been used by Google and many high-tech companies. That's right. That's one of the most popular um, uh, companies, and Google kind of acknowledges that um, OKRs are, are, you know, are the reason for their, you know, kind of... Their uh, success, right, that's right. right. And, and, and so why don't we put up the uh, second slide and, and see that. Okay, so I see a lot of acronyms up there, and they seem to be all about... Goal setting. Could you go over? Uh, they're like like the grandfather or the father of OKRs in a way. <laughs> um, well, you know, I would say that these are different. So let me have, set some context here. All right. Well, when we talk about Hawaii, you know, um, I would say I mean not. I don't have you know empirical data for this, but uh, it's a say fifty percent of companies don't even do strategic planning mm -hmm. on a even annual basis. So let's take them out. And then there's a whole set of companies who do strategic plans, and these are documents which are very intellectual right. and which are never implemented yeah. uh, in the companies. Let's them take them out as well. <laughs> okay, all right. So what we are left with are companies who uh, have strategic plans and who have day-to-day -day execution, and they are looking for an effective bridge between these two. Okay. So all these methods that we saw on the slide uh, relate to that. So OGSM, for instance, is objectives, goals, strategies, mm. and measures, uh, came from uh, the reconstruction of Japan after World oh, War wow. II. Yeah. Uh, uh, there is uh, you know, some other uh, 
four DX, four disciplines of execution, a different method, balanced scorecards. Um, there's one called uh, <coughs> there's BHAG, the big BHAG. very audacious goals, That's uh, right. which is very very uh, visionary in a way and, yep. and hard to achieve, but they put it out there by yep. the CEO. Comes from a philosophy called Rockefeller habits, and you have BHAG and then rocks and then so these are all bridges between strategy and execution and companies, especially companies that are growth focused. Uh, kind of use these as tools. So yeah, so they're tools, not philosophies, but uh, rather, but they're tools based on a certain philosophy that is correct. Uh, about how to do business or how to grow uh, grow your yeah. uh, business and achieve results. That's right. That's right. Okay, the third slide, please. Okay, this is a formula. Wow, and uh, I will uh, uh, objective as measured by these key results and the how, the what and the how. And this is, I guess, the model, the key uh, 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 focus of OKRs? Yeah, so John Doerr, who has been promoting OKRs, uh, you know, this is kind of his formula. Um, the objective is like, what are we gonna do to further, you know, our company's interest? And then uh, key results are like, how are we going to achieve those objectives? Um, so one of the litmus test for key results would be, uh, they are the battles, you know, and the objective is the war that you have oh, to win. Right, right. So, you know, like they say, choose your battles which will help you win the war. Right, right. So right. it kind of uh, uh, focuses you on doing the right things, basically. <clears throat> and, and we're looking at an audience of CEOs out there mm -hmm. uh, that you s said you extrapolated uh, people who, uh, the CEOs of leadership, who have strategic plans and who want to execute and this is a way of bridging that. They have a goal and how to do that day to day that they end up where their goal is. That, that, that is correct. Uh, one of the key advantages OKR method have over, and we have, you know, as a consulting company, we have worked with, you know, the framework that our clients use. But from our perspective, one of the key advantages in OKR method is, uh, you know, especially in the local context where we operate, is we see in most of the time, when say people set smart goals, right. um, it assumes that you already know to a very great uh, specificity what you want to do and how you will do it mm -hmm. and all that. And sometimes it's not that clear. Um, so so that, that's where the smart breaks down. Also in terms of aligning the entire organization behind one you know, direction, it's difficult because smart is most about, mostly about individual you know, goals. Um, so what ha ends up happening is the managers end up doing most of the heavy lifting, while OKRs allow them to align the entire organization so their direct reports and uh, frontline staff support their overall goals. Well, you, you, there's a kind of, uh, I guess, a focusing on the entire organization. That is correct. But, but you do break it down into groups That's who correct. are held accountable That's to uh, execute and to uh, uh, you know, uh, to fulfill those goals. That is correct. All right, uh, why don't we turn to the next one? Oh, a time scale. This is interesting because a lot of times uh, when you have strategic plans, uh, at the end of the year, it says, uh, where did the year go? <laughs> and then there's no results. Or you haven't grown. Or, yeah. uh, or you haven't uh, done uh, things that you set out to do. That's right. uh, but again, uh, that goes back to your, what you said earlier. Many companies uh, either don't do strategy plans or do they have one that they don't um, really uh, execute. That's correct. And, and so that one uh, is, is basically focused on a, a time frame to achieve uh, or to execute uh, your, your uh, I guess, uh, to uh, get to your key results. That's right. So OKR framework allows for nesting of your goals. And the nesting is of two types. One is you can have a five-year OKR, and then one level below that you have one-year OKR. Oh, wow, which that's a long one. Yeah, roll yeah. up under right. the five-year OKR. The other way of nesting is you can have the overall company goal and the department goals are under that mm. and the OKRs are kind of serving to achieve the company goals. And then you can have individual goals serving to achieve the department level goals. So in those two ways, um, they can be nested. Now, how, how are, uh, this is a very simple question, but uh, how are OKRs developed with an organization? Because they must uh, be um, based on a strategic plan. Mm -hmm. So there must be a strategic plan first before OKRs. Am I, am I correct? That's correct. Yeah. So uh, the way we have implemented OKRs in our companies, both for profit and non profit, um, and we will do it for you know, a government uh, d department as well, 
um, is first you do the strategy, um, and then it can be a quarterly or annual strategy. And then at the end of the strategy, you develop the overall organizational OKRs. And once that is there, then you try to roll it down to departments and individuals. But there, instead of just being top down, right. it's more like a, a discussion of right. how, what can further yeah. the overall company objectives. And that's the best way to uh, implement it. Having said that, I will also say that um, it is more effective that the organization in year one of implementing just do the company OKRs. Mm. And once the managers, the top managers, get in the habit of you know, achieving uh, you know, success in this format, they roll it down and bring other people in. So it's, a, it's, it's something that um, is not, um, can be learned very quickly. Uh, I mean, you have to get that learning in the organization over time. To, about uh, what is strategic planning and then uh, getting OKRs. It's, it's, it's not something that you can train people in a month. Well, I, I think learning is of two types. So understanding OKRs is very simple. And that's one of the reasons it is so attractive to companies, all kinds of companies. But the discipline of executing against OKRs, that takes time to build. It's like a muscle that you, know, you have to just develop. Right. And, and when you say uh, this muscle, is it that people um, have a, um, a, a OKR or they have a key result, but they just don't um, uh, execute daily on it, they forget about it, or, or, the, the, or people are not held accountable, accountable to achieve those uh, OKRs w within a group or organization? Well, um, you know, we are mostly in a knowledge economy now. So the way to measure success is no longer how many phone calls are we making right, right. or how many emails are we sending. It's what results we are delivering. Right. But it is difficult sometimes for people to distinguish between busy work and what is really mm. driving the objectives forward. Right. And that change of habit, I think, uh, you know, takes time. And, and, well, we're going to go to a, a next slide and see, see what that's all about. Oh, there are rules on this, and why don't you go through them? Yeah, so um, you know, the first rule is uh, set annually, both annually as well as quarterly. I, I am a firm believer that the speed in which the market changes now, right. anything which we just have annually is no longer relevant. <laughs> right. So We're it is very, at hyper speed, as you know. That is correct. Yeah, right. so when we implement OKRs, we, you know, we do it quarterly, and then we break the quarter mm. into 13 weeks, and we show progress on right. each key result on a weekly basis. Uh, that's an effective bridge between strategy and execution. Don't have too many. Sometimes people get too ambitious mm -hmm. and they get too um, detailed, uh, especially in the beginning. So you know you, you, you kind of stick to uh, just having the overall two or three objectives and then maximum four or five key results underneath that. Oh, yes. okay. um, make them challenging. So this is important. Mm -hmm. uh, the teams achieve more if the overall objective is more uh, visionary and more challenging. Uh, do, do the teams uh, uh, think more or do more? What, what, uh, because it, it's, it's like an um, effort to get people together because they, they, sometimes people give up because the goal is too ambitious. Yeah, uh, so you know, that is another advantage of an OKR um, in the sense that you can have an ambitious objective and then you can have key results where you can make them more realistic. Hmm. So for instance, um, it is more motivating if you tell me that our team is going to work on building the tallest building in Hawaii right. versus building the 17th tallest building in Hawaii. Oh, it's just like right, more, right. Uh, you well, know. Yes, of course. So, there's um, a good, good, uh, uh, yeah, there's a good comparison. Uh, uh, go back to the uh, slide again, the last one. Yeah. And then the last one, and this is, you know, uh, promoted especially by the version that Google has implemented. The KRs need to be really quantitative. Right. Uh, objectives can be more, you know, qualitative, and they need to have a number. And what that allows us to do is to say, are we 70% there mm -hmm. or you know, on right. a week by week basis? So you can see progress. You can that match what you're doing. Uh, there's a, there's a, uh, a, qua a quantitative yeah. measure of yeah. this. And that's a great metric. I think, I think a lot of companies uh, think that they're progressing, but they, if they don't have a metric, that's then correct. they may be falling behind vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the competition or yeah. even uh, within their own organization. Yeah. Uh, so, so going uh, even further, I think for the um, Leadership, 
What drives the OKR process? Is it the top person, the CEO says, this is very important for an organization, let's all, all go for it, uh, and he gets people together and, and um, in a process, how does it all begin? So, you know, like I was telling you, if we ex exclude all the companies which, which don't do any strategic thinking, right. which are just living day to day, and then we exclude companies which are only interested in a planned document, uh, companies which really want to bridge strategy and day-to-day -day execution, they're actually hungry for such, uh, you know, such frameworks. And we'll hold it right there after this important break. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on ThinkTech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. <laughs> Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. This is Ray Tuchiyama. We're back in this exciting dialogue with our guest, Iqbal Ashraf of Guild Consulting. And we had a question just before our break on how can OKRs be best uh, cascaded down into the organization? How can uh, they uh, present an example of execute, executing OKRs to other uh, staff members uh, throughout the organization? That's where we left it. And um, why don't you continue in your, in your response? Yeah, well, so like I was saying, um, uh, Ray, um, the only companies which are interested um, in you know, the OKRs and they see the need for this are companies which are already doing strategic planning, number one. And number two, they, uh, they are using that not just as an intellectual exercise, but trying to implement in their organization. They see this value of OKRs immediately. Uh, we have just implemented OKRs in a nonprofit, a large nonprofit in here in Hawaii, uh, in North Shore, um, where you know when we asked them for their uh, previous strategic plan, they couldn't even find it because it was done and <laughs> right. you know, put in a shelf, right. collecting dust. Right. Um, it so wasn't a living document. That's what it you're was saying. not. Yeah, it was a uh, fossil. <laughs> so uh, for OKR, I think the CEO buy-in or you know right. the managing directors buy-in. Without that, you go nowhere. Mm. Uh, but then beyond that, the top management has to buy in. And that's all we need for the first year. Uh, but <clears throat> once they start seeing the value of that, of how far ahead they are versus their peers, you know, after one right. quarter, then it is an easier sell to the rest of the organization. And when you say far ahead, uh, what you're saying in the, the operations meetings or when they go over the OKRs, so they must be using what's called benchmarks. They must be uh, looking at themselves vis-a-vis -vis their competitors in yeah. the same space. Yeah, like if you, know, if you are a company which does not do strategy planning and all that, then basically you are trying to grow your uh, organization by sales and then you're trying to hire the people. That's the common you right, know, thing right. that you are involved in. But um, when you are doing OKR or other methods like this, then at the end of the quarter, you not only do those things, but you achieve those big capability increases mm -hmm. or make these leapfrog kind right. of things which the other your peers have not done because they, are, they have not been thinking about those things. They have been just living day to day. Mm. That's what I mean uh, versus their peers. Okay, next, next slide, please. Well, this is uh, regarding performance management and you have like an example of that. Am That's I right. correct? Uh, and, and this is, I think, uh, many companies uh, that are growing quickly have the same, uh, I guess, um, issue or problem. Uh, how do you hire good people and join in a, in a timely manner or very quickly and, and grow the company. It, That's right. So this is, deals more not with just the hiring, but how do you um, create that ramp up mm. so that they are in production much right. faster. 
Um, so in, in this case, for instance, you know, the, the objective, if you, if you can go back to the slide, yeah. um, kind of tolerate some vagueness because right. you know, the improved performance of new recruits can mean different things. So right. there is a little right. bit of vagueness yeah. in that, and that's perfectly fine in the OKR yeah. method. Okay. But then we go to key results, and they are really, oh, really specific. Right. Right. Uh, so they are saying basically we have to reduce the onboarding process by one week. And there's a time, time thing, one that week, seven days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, reduce new hire performance uh, review cycle time. Mm. And I'm not really happy about that KR because it needs to have a quantitative measure right. to that as well. And then this company, this client had a mentoring process internally right. and then they wanted to uh, improve the mentor to new recruits ratio uh, by to one is to four. Basically, it was you know much wider span before that. It was not very effective. So that is how they are trying to improve the ramp up period of new recruits. And, and again, that that is um, a way to do it in in uh, area we we would call HR, right? That's and, correct. And, and it's not just for HR related uh, uh, objectives. It could be in finance. It could be in IT. That's right. It could be in sales. It could be in marketing. Many many areas yeah. of a contemporary. Uh, firm. Yeah, in fact, uh, this kind of bridged HR and operations right. because the overall objective was the company level objective. Two of those key results were owned by HR, right. and one, the mentoring, was an operational person right. because they are the ones mentoring the new recruits, not the HR. You're correct, because uh, just because you hire people uh, quickly doesn't mean that they're mentored or trained That's and correct. getting into uh, you know, delivering uh, results in, in production or operations. That's correct. And, and so it, it, it's kind of uh, border bridging to, to groups that uh, usually are siloed. That's right. And that, that's unfortunate in most firms. Uh, right. Here you have an OKR that kind of uh, melds uh, two groups and makes both of them exponentially yeah, yeah. more efficient. You actually touch upon a really important point. Uh, OKRs break down silos in mm. organizations. And, and we see that in all organizations. Uh, I have seen that up close in a nonprofit where they just did their own thing. And OKRs basically, you know, you can have an objective which is company level, but then the, each key result might go into a different department or a different individual. And they have to all work together to make the overall objective come to life. Well, you have a very good point. I don't want to go into the uh, state government, <laughs> but, but there are many areas sure. that they could uh, function, collaborate, and, and, and go for the uh, uh, similar uh, results that That's would correct. be for larger objectives yeah. throughout efficiency or, or uh, throughout the state government. Next slide, please. And we have another one uh, that's coming out of sale, the sales. We sure. had one of uh, two areas, HR and operations. And, and what is this about? So this is about a referral program. Um, so the objective is kind of inspiring that the entire company can rally around. So basically, they want customers as advocates of their you know, mm -hmm. service. Um, and then they have a whole bunch of key results underneath that. All, um, you know, some of them are owned by individuals outside sales or account management. The first one is owned by the chief operating officer. Uh, and uh, his job is to reduce the processing errors. Right. Um, in this case, her job reduce the processing error rate so that the clients, current clients feel happier, so they are right. more conducive to giving referrals Refers, to this company. Right, right, of course. Uh, uh, and then there's a training component to that, there's a hiring component to that, uh, and then those are all owned by different individuals hmm. from different departments. So again, when you say sales, it's not just the sales department, there are other uh, groups uh, involved in this uh, OKR. That's correct. Okay, all right. Next slide, please. And this is, uh, I guess, uh, trying to metric or trying to get people to review and, and update each other what's happening in, in their area where they own or accountability. Yeah. This is how we you know, kind of tangibly show how do we bring strategy mm -hmm. to life on a week by week basis. So in this case, as you see, the objective is on top. Uh, it's the same example, and it's owned by uh, you know, Matt, right. uh, who, who is in account management. Right. Um, and then Cindy, who is the chief operating officer, owns the processing error right. rate reduction. And then we review this every week with mm. this client. And then basically you say, are you in red, green, or yellow? Right. Red meaning you are stuck. You, know, you right. may not be able to achieve this. Uh, yellow means you know, uh, there's some issues going on. Right. Green means you are on track of right. achieving this. By and the much end of, of it is green. That's good. Uh, That's and, and so this is a report card that you can That's see right. in a weekly. It's not placing blame. It's just that uh, you, you, you need help. You need uh, a focus. You need you know, all kinds of uh, ways to get ahead. Uh, this is shedding light on how to achieve that OKR. That's correct. Okay. 
Uh, next slide, please. So this kind of talks about, um, you know, how do you align the entire organization? Again, I would not uh, recommend going to the whole pyramid right. the first year of implementation. But uh, see that on the top is your vision and purpose for the organization. And then we have, uh, you know, uh, OKRs at the company level. Sometimes uh, people have five-year OKRs and right. then one-year OKRs right. below that. But then you go down uh, to department-level OKRs mm -hmm. uh, and then to individual-level OKRs. And the kind of, uh, you know, the example I would take here is, you know, I used to, you know, paddle. Right. So when you are canoeing, you know, everybody needs to row at the same rhythm and That's the same right. direction and all That's that. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, to the same drum beat. Otherwise, if you're misaligned, the effect is much less focused and the impact is so much uh, lesser. Right. Uh, so this is how you align the entire organization between the overall, uh, you know, right. vision and purpose of the company. But going back to, finally to where we started in our conversation is, is about strategic planning. <laughs> yeah. and, and if people don't plan, people don't go, uh, their uh, organizations or even, even individuals as staff people cannot grow and, mm. and add new abilities mm. or uh, new skills and so forth. And of course, uh, everybody has to contribute to uh, the growth of an organization and it may be a lot to do with breaking down silos. Mm -hmm. And so what you bring with OKRs is that it's, it's of course, um, uh, trying to execute on a strategic plan, but also making an organization really work better. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the uh, kind of a side results of all this? That is correct. So how do you achieve your strategic plan on a day-to-day -day basis? Mm. How do you um, ensure that things get done uh, not just in the busy work, but the, what you set out to you know, do. And is it that people uh, here in Hawaii that you mentioned, uh, a lot of them uh, don't do strategic plans mm -hmm. or, or put them away and don't execute, execute? Is it because they don't have a tool like the OKR uh, that they can, uh, um, they can achieve those uh, strategic plans? Or is it a mindset that anything they, they do uh, is, 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 is just on, focused on growing and, and by adding people or sales and not doing things strategically to, to really be a disruptive force in the uh, business landscape? You know, you know, I did not really think about that, but that's a very interesting question, Ray. Uh, I, my personal hypothesis is, uh, you know, with time, a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, get farther away from why they mm. started on that journey in the first place. Right. They get farther away from their customers right. and they get more preoccupied by their competitors mm. or just doing what they are doing every day. Right. Um, but that's a question beyond OKR, so why they are not doing you know, strategic planning <laughs> right. in well, the first place. Well, uh, we're coming to the end and I think though for the audience of CEOs or leaders of not only companies, but nonprofits and maybe directors of state agencies, uh, they should look at this and sure. look at it as a context of uh, planning plus execution mm -hmm. and how to make a more efficient organization. Yeah. And we come to the close. I want to thank you for this discussion. And on behalf of uh, Think Tech Hawaii and Business in Hawaii, my name is Ray Tsuchiyama. Thank you very much. Thank you.